thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading in the book of Psalms, Psalm 101, Psalm of David. In verse 2, David spoke about how he wanted to live a blameless life. And then in the rest of the chapter in Psalm 101, he goes on to speak of some of the virtues, characteristics of a Christian life. And today I wanted to speak about our conduct. I remember many years ago, an old-time deacon said to me, and it still resonates in my mind and in my heart, that a Christian is known by their fruits and not by their suits. In other words, there was always a tendency in the church to judge people by how they looked, how they dressed, uh, so much emphasis on the outward appearance. Now, that doesn't mean that we should go to church dressed immodestly. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 tells us that a woman should dress modestly. A lady shouldn't come to church saying, oh, God just sees my heart and come with a mini skirt on with high heels and fishnet stockings. No, we ought to dress modestly as men and women in the church, but the emphasis is that God looks at the heart. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 is a reminder. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Our conduct should be such that reflects the uh, image of Christ as we imitate Christ as his children. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11 is a reminder that a child is known by its conduct. When I was growing up, the way I behaved, whether it was in school or out in the street, although I was personally responsible to God, was a reflection of my parents and how they raised me. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child when they're young, and when they grow up, they won't depart from that way. I have daughters. My daughters, when they went to school, how they behaved, how they conducted themselves, although they, yes, they were personally responsible to God, was a reflection of me and my wife and how we raised them. And as Christians, how we behave in life should imitate Jesus Christ. Christ himself told us in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. Something that is repeated in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. If we say we know the Lord or love him, we'll obey his word. My friends, a tree is known by its fruits. As Christ our Lord and Savior said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. As Christians, we should live a life that is holy, set apart from this world. When Christ walked this earth, in John chapter 14, verse 30, we're told that he spoke of the prince of the air of this world, who is Satan. Satan rules this world, but Christ said in that verse, Satan has nothing to do with him because Christ lived a holy life. He lived a life separate from this world. Too often Christians want to imitate the people in this world, the values of this world, the philosophies of this world. Every time a new fad comes up, like whose life matters or some other fad that comes up, Christians run and flock to it, imitating the world. We're not to imitate the world. We're to imitate God. The world is an enemy with God. Matter of fact, we're told in James chapter 4, verse 4, if we love this world, we're an enemy of God. Why? Because this world system, not the world that God created, everything you see like that has life, the trees, the grass, the fruits, uh, you look at the clouds and the sun and the moon. That's beautiful. God created, but it's the world system. First John chapter 5, verse 19 tells us that the whole world is under the sway of the devil. So we need to be separate from this world, holy, imitating Christ in our conduct. I hope today's devotional video, my friends, will be an encouragement to us to remember that as Galatians chapter 1, verse 4 tells us, Christ died for us. He died for our sins to deliver us from this evil, wicked generation. Why would we want to imitate the values of this world that oppose God? We are to imitate Christ. We are to live for him. Our conduct should be reflective of how he would want us to live. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I am perfect, that I always imitate Christ. I struggle with sin. As I often remind us, Galatians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us that the flesh and the spirit war against each other. I mean, you look at Romans chapter 7, Paul, the apostle, who is a godly man, speaks honestly there of his struggles within himself, the things he wanted to do, he didn't do, and the things he shouldn't have done, that he did. But let us learn to conduct ourselves like 
Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. I encourage you to look at those scripture verses when you have a chance today. Look at the list of the virtues and the characteristics that we should follow as Christians. It's basically summed up in the word love. Christ gave us the two greatest commandments in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40, when he said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ. We'll see this devotional video today. Help us to live a holy life, a life full of love for you and for others. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all today, my friends. Stay separate from the things of this world and live for Christ this day.